Back again already, I see. Well, no problem. Last week we talked about clarity. We talked about texture and dehaze in Lightroom. Although this is also applicable to Photoshop, to Capture One, pretty much any editing software that you might use. This week, we're going to talk about the difference between vibrance and saturation. Something that is quite subtle, but can be quite meaningful and can definitely affect the way you choose to edit your photo and what you want to get from it. Let's just dive into it. It's Tutorial Tuesday. <laughs> Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each and every, each and every Tuesday we bring you a brand new, fresh photography tutorial. This week, like I say, we're diving back into Lightroom, but this is applicable to loads of other editing software. This is a pretty generic photo editing thing that we're talking about. The difference between vibrance and saturation. Let's dive in right now and take a look. So I've got this photo here. We're going to look at a couple of different photos because this can affect different photos in different ways. This is a particularly colorful photo with this very bright red background. And of course, we have a model in the shot, which is useful because we're going to talk about skin tones as well here. So over on the right here, we've got our sliders. And in the sort of basic panel here, towards the bottom, we have vibrance and saturation. And while they both do similar things, they are a little bit different in the way that they affect the colors of your photo and the way that they actually affect that overall look. So obviously, saturation is going to affect the color saturation. And this of the two is the most straightforward slider. It is going to affect all colors equally. It's just going to boost the saturation of all colors. So if we look at this photo here right now, if we bring the saturation up, you can see the red becomes very saturated. You can see the skin tones become very saturated, right? So the oranges, the blue becomes quite saturated. Everything is just being increased up. So for example, here we've already got a pretty colorful photo. Like I say, everything, no matter how saturated it is, is just being increased uniformly when you increase the saturation. Now, vibrance is a little bit different. Vibrance is a little bit more natural and a little bit more subtle in the way that it increases the saturation of colors. And it'll tend to primarily and actually specifically focus in on the colors in the midtones. It'll also generally boost the less saturated colors first before boosting the more saturated colors in the photo. And it's also a lot more gentle on the skin tone. So your oranges, your reds, and your yellows. So if we bring that up here, let's increase the vibrance. You can see it's not so immediately crazy. And even all the way up to 100 like this, you can see the skin tone on our model here is much more subtly increased in saturation. Even the reds behind, you know, it's even, it's quite a colorful photo but it's not as aggressive as bringing that saturation all the way up like that. It's much more subtle, but what you can see, if I bring the saturation up again, you see everything is increased. Let's bring that back to zero and bring the vibrance up. You can really see it in the blue of this bow tie. If I switch now between 100% on vibrance and then 100% on saturation, you can see how much of a difference the two sliders are making. Saturation is really just oversaturating everything. Vibrance is being much more gentle with those reds, those oranges, those yellows. But the blue is more saturated when we look at vibrance. If we come over to this landscape photo, you'll see it's a very similar kind of situation. If I bring the saturation up here, it's just going to saturate every color uniformly. Whereas if I do the same thing with vibrance, it's much gentler with these oranges and these yellows. And actually it's the blue in the sky that gets saturated much more. And actually that looks quite nice. So generally because of this, I will tend to gravitate towards vibrance over saturation. I'll tend to play around with the vibrance a lot more than I will saturation, but there's still certainly a place for saturation. When you have a raw photo, that just generally does need a bit more saturation. That is when the saturation slider is really useful. Something like this, which, you know, arguably doesn't necessarily need much, but if you want it to be a bit more colorful, you could just bring that saturation up, not kind of a crazy amount, but something like, something like plus 15, right? That's gonna give you a reasonably nice kind of boost to all those colors. If I was to bring the vibrance up, it's going to be much less aggressive on the skin tones, but it's going to boost things like the green in the background and the blue of my t-shirt there. Whereas the saturation, I don't want to increase as much because it's it's a bit more aggressive in the way that it's applying it. But it has overall just, just bumped those colors up a little bit. So something like this photo, 
that's how I might go ahead with that. I might start with a little bit of a bump on saturation and then go a little bit more crazy with the vibrance and play around with it a little bit until I'm happy with where I think the photo needs to be. Similarly, with a photo like this, if I was just to bring the saturation up a touch, it does make it a little bit more of a colorful photo, but there are certain downsides to that as well. I could bring the vibrance up, I'm gonna get more blue in that sky, and it's not going to be so intense on the pebbles and on Nala here, my dog, that I've taken this photo. This photo incidentally comes up quite a lot in these editing tutorials. It's just a very useful photo I've found for demonstrating different editing techniques, which is, it's interesting how universal this photo is. And actually this photo does demonstrate a bit of an issue that can happen with saturation or vibrance, right? So we start with zero on both again. If I just wanted a bit more color, it's a little bit flat, it's a little bit, little bit dull, I can bring that saturation up, right? And that's gonna make it a little bit more colorful. But I do think we're getting too much color cast on Nala which I don't necessarily want. And I don't love the colors of the pebbles here. Okay, so we'll take the saturation down and we'll bring vibrance up and see how we feel about that. Now, I do think that's better. We're getting a nice blue in the sky. Actually, that works really well for me. But again, I might not want them as much color cast on Nala here. So there are other ways we can work with saturation in the photo. And this is gonna get a little bit more advanced in what we can achieve with saturation. But if we scroll down here to the color mixer panel, we've got this HSL tab. Now, if you don't see that, you can just click here, adjust HSL. It might be set to adjust color. You can click adjust HSL. That's how we're gonna look at it. And then you've got this saturation tab here. So your hue, saturation, and luminance. We'll go into this more in depth in another video within the next couple of weeks. But to begin with, we can now affect the saturation of each individual color channel. So if I don't want as much color cast on Nala here, I could maybe bring down the yellow saturation, maybe bring down the orange saturation. And that is going to significantly reduce that and significantly reduce the color saturation in the pebbles down here. So if that's the look I wanted to go for, that's something I can do. I can always double click to reset those. Now we can also come all the way down to the bottom here to the calibration panel. This is where we can affect the actual RGB color. So the red, green and blue colors within the photo. We can change things like the hue and the saturation. Now again, we'll go into this in its own video, but for this one, we can look at the saturation again. So we've got the red primary, the green primary and the blue primary. So for example, on this one, we could bring that saturation on the red primary down a little bit and it does affect the color cast on Nala, and it does affect those pebbles. We could also try the green, and that's gonna help to bring down some of it as well, but that arguably does bring down too much of the overall saturation of the photo. So again, I find that less is more with kind of all of this stuff, right? Generally, you don't wanna go too far with things because it can really start to affect the photo in a very big way. That's why I prefer generally to use vibrance over saturation because it's a little bit more natural, a little bit more subtle, a little bit more reasonable. And once you're comfortable with these two sliders here, the vibrance and the saturation, I think it is useful to start playing around with the saturation sliders in the HSL tab here in the color mixer panel. And it can be useful to start playing around with those saturation sliders in the calibration panel as well. Now, with all that said, the best thing to do is to dive into whatever editing program you're using and have a little play with vibrance and saturation. See how you feel about it. And always remember that even though one technique and one way of using the sliders might work perfectly for one photo, it'll probably be different for another photo. For example, portraits, I will almost always only use vibrance because I'm trying to protect those skin tones from getting too oversaturated. Whereas a landscape photo, I might dive in and do a little bit of saturation, right? A nice sunset like this photo here is going to be more affected by the saturation initially because it's going to boost all of the colors. But I might go in and try the vibrance, which is going to protect those kind of golden tones in the sky a little bit more. So I can boost the saturation of other colors more by using vibrance without worrying about oversaturation in the sky, which I might get doing, doing a similar thing with saturation. You can see that there, it just starts to get too crazy. But again, with Vibrance, it's much, much nicer, much more reasonable as well. So hopefully that helps to explain the difference between Vibrance and Saturation. We're gonna look at things like color temperature and tint in the next video. We're also gonna look at things like the HSL tab in more detail, the calibration tab in more detail. So we've got some pretty cool photo editing tutorials coming up, which 
I'm always quite excited about demands. I like doing these. These are a lot of fun. But you guys have always got great ideas for photography tutorials, for photo editing tutorials. We're definitely going to get to some Capture One stuff. We'll look at Photoshop as well. But I want to look at some other editing programs as well. So if you have any specific ones that you'd like to see, let me know down in the comments because I think that's really useful. And any other tutorials that you would like to see, let me know in the comments. These series of videos that we're doing at the moment all came from a suggestion. They're really helpful. Really helpful. I want to make the stuff you guys want to see. So let me know in the comments exactly what you'd like to see and we'll do our best to get to as many as we possibly can. Now you can check out a full list of all the kit we use for this video, for a lot of these photos, for all that kind of stuff down in the description of this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe as well if you're new here because there's new stuff all the time, new tutorials every week, reviews, all kinds of stuff. I will see you in the next video, but until then, as always, thanks for watching.